used to hunting for deep sky objects inside our own Milky Way galaxy. But tonight I'm dead excited I'm going to be using this telescope to hunt for a deep sky object in a distant galaxy. So this is the Andromeda galaxy. It's in fact a group of three galaxies lying around two and a half million light years away. And the light strike in the camera was emitted long before modern humans ever existed. And this is so exciting. We're going to be hunting for deep sky objects within this galaxy. So in the Andromeda galaxy, some two and a half million light years away, lies one of the biggest globular clusters in our local group of galaxies. And it's tiny. It's 0.6 of an arc minute across and it's glowing dimly down at magnitude 13.6, so really faint and really small. So the globular cluster is a really tight, dense ball of stars packed really closely together and they're found orbiting galaxies like our own Milky Way and also the Andromeda Galaxy. And G1 is the brightest globular orbiting the Andromeda Galaxy. Now there are a few scientific papers that show that it may be the core of a galaxy that's long been devoured up in a collision with the Andromeda Galaxy. So regardless of whether it's a globular or the remnants of a long since devoured galaxy, we're going to try and find this in the eyepiece, this dense ball of stars that's orbiting the Andromeda Galaxy. So we're game for a challenge. We're going to find a dense cloud of stars two and a half million light years away that's barely visible. But we've got the telescope, we've got some decent eyepieces and we've got reasonably clear skies tonight. So let's go for it. Now this is a real challenge because the objects we're going to look for is one pretty faint and two pretty small. So I've got to one be able to find it and two then be able to see it. So I am using the star charts in Sky Safari and every time I find something that I think would make me want to revert back to my old paper star chart, Sky Safari seems to have the answer. So here is M31. If we zoom in, we can see the two satellite galaxies. And if I do a search for G1, search center, it actually shows our target. Right, so I'm just going to turn the lights off now and I will see you when it's dark. So this is the new power box and I've got the dew heater controller. So all I have to do now is turn that on and then reach around and turn the mount on. So we'll go deep sky. It's going to warm our eyes up on M31. Done. So what I love about the setup I've got at the moment is it with my phone to Sky Safari and if I go uh, scope connect I now have planetarium software on my phone that I can now use to control the telescope. So with the telescope pointing at Andromeda I'm going to put the binary viewer in I've got the 19 millimeter panoptics so I'll um, turn the red light off now and uh, let my eyes get used to the dark. And if you look along this line of the telescope, you can see the Andromeda galaxy. It's visible to the naked eye. And it's relatively easy to find. If you can see the W of Cassiopeia, use the right-hand triangle of stars, and that actually points straight to the Andromeda galaxy. Really enjoying the views with the Binavir, absolutely glorious being able to use two eyes. The very fact that I'm using two eyes actually makes it that much more pleasant. So yeah, really enjoying it. So I can see the bright nucleus in the centre, that's the actual core of the Andromeda galaxy. And around that bright nucleus there's a sort of dimmer, sort of halo of bright stars around, or bright nebulosity. And you can sort of start to see some of the dark lanes. So I'm going to let my eyes get fully used to the dark. So 
so that was a really hard observation. I have been looking at this globula for best part of 45 minutes now and I've had to take the binary viewer out, put an eyepiece in so I'm not splitting the light in half into each eye and even then it was tenuous although I could see there's some granularity. There's two field stars that are right alongside it and I couldn't split those out so I've had to put the high power eyepiece in. I'm now at 350 times power and just on the limit of vision where the seeing was just right with the averted vision I've got my hood up as well to block off the stray light from the sides. I can just make out the two field stars and the granular cluster in the middle. It's a deep sky object, it's a star cluster inside the Andromeda galaxy two and a half million light years away and it's just visible right on the edge of vision so it's been this wonderful challenging object and I've seen it, I've seen it with my own eyes. So absolutely buzzing now and Mrs Radici as a, as a reward has made me a cup of tea so I am now going to chill out for a bit. I'm actually going to have a quick look at Jupiter. But it's a stonky night. Absolutely beautiful night. But it's looking really good. Milky Way is looking really strong, really bright. So that's why I thought tonight, tonight was the night to go for these sort of challenging deep sky objects. Absolutely wonderful. Really excited. Really excited to see that. So I can't believe it, having been enjoying the views in the Andromeda galaxy, which is sort of shooting star, go past the Pleiades, and in true astronomy in England style, I'm like ready to go and do some more observing. There's a thin layer of cloud just coming in, Jupiter sort of disappearing into the, Mer the Milky Way's disappeared. So I'm absolutely buzzing from catching that uh, globular cluster, globular cluster in another galaxy. But I think I'm gonna have to draw stumps and pack away. So as I pack everything away, the dew shield is absolutely dripping. But with the dew shield on and with the heaters, if I show you the corrector plate, we've got no dew. So thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe and I look forward to bringing you more videos as we explore the night sky.